Hi and welcome to the Creative Treehouse. My name is Robin Broom and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Thanks so much for joining me in the Treehouse today. Today's project is a watercolor technique card. I have watercolored the flowers on this. Um, these are basically the same. Um, every time you watercolor it's gonna be a little bit different uh, I believe this one the flowers seem lighter to me and but the leaves seem darker to me so and the inside looks like that so let me go over all the dimensions with you and you can possibly follow along or change it up depending on what you have in your craft room this is the cottage rose stamp set i've had it for probably more than a month but it's i'm just now getting around to using it uh, in for today's card we're going to use the great big flower we're going to use the medium one and we're going to use the feel better real soon uh, sentiment i this these sentiments just go really really well with this i was going to try different sentiments and ended up just choosing those because they just coordinate so well all right, let's go over the dimensions. The card base is the eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. There's a little, this came this way, there's a little um, mark on it, but I'm gonna cover that up. I thought I would just go ahead and use that and so you don't panic if you end up with a piece of paper that's a little bit like that. So that's our card base. And then after that, on top of that is our beautiful DSP. And that comes from that same set, the Cottage Rose. I believe the suite is called Abigail Rose, but ah, it's just gorgeous. And they always have a, a second side that's equally as gorgeous, but that is that one. And then after that will come, oh, did I tell you the dimensions? I don't believe I did. The DSP is at is five and three eighths by four four and one eighth. Now, if you need any of these dimensions, they will be on my website, the my blog. All right, and then we move to the crumb cake, which is four and three quarters by three and a half. After that, soft suede, cut at four and a half by three and a quarter. And then the last piece on the top of the card is the fluid watercolor paper, and it is cut at four and three eighths by three and one eighth. So that's for the top of the card. On the bottom of the card, or inside of the card, I should say, are two pieces, and we've got crumb cake and very vanilla. The crumb cake is cut at five and one eighth and by three and seven eighths, and the very vanilla is cut at four and fifteen sixteenths by three and eleven sixteenths. Um, that's a little bit tricky to say, and again, they're on my blog, all the dimensions. All right, so the main thing we're going to work on is the water coloring. So we'll bring out our fluid watercolor paper that we've already cut to the right dimensions. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put an extra piece of paper under that. Uh, we're not going to be using a whole lot of water, so it shouldn't be a problem, but we're going to now take the soft suede. And to do this particular watercolor technique, what you're going to do is you're going to be squeezing your stamp pads. And when you squeeze it, just give it a good squeeze and you open it up well <laughs> not not this one but anyway this one doesn't have as much ink on it i don't i don't suppose but i'll show you because we don't need it for this particular one but you'll end up with ink here and that'll be your ink well to watercolor but this one we're just going to use as normal and just take our big flower stamp it up Make sure I've inked it up. A lot of times it's easier to actually invert it and take the stamp pad and do that to the flower or whatever stamp you have if your stamps are bigger. All right, I'm gonna put it a little bit off to the left-hand side, apply some pressure and lift it up. Ah, oh, isn't that just a gorgeous, oh, such a gorgeous set. I don't think you could ever have too many flowers. Some people think so. While we've got that out, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sentiment. And the sentiment is also in soft suede. And I'm gonna put it up here in the right-hand corner, like that. Doesn't that just look fabulous? All right, by doing the sentiment then, I probably gave just a little bit of time for this to dry because this is an ink, uh, water-based ink. So, and we're watercoloring, so it could mean we could have 
uh, a little bit of smearing, but we're not going to use a lot of water, so it shouldn't be a problem. All right, now we are going to squeeze, and when you squeeze, it should give you the ink right there. All right, so then what you will need is some of the water painters, and the water painters are, um, they come in sets of three, and there is a, a one that's very wide that's great for doing backgrounds and then there's others that are a little bit thinner i'm going to use one of the the thinner ones now it's got a reservoir for water um, and then so you just screw it unscrew it and fill it up then you're just going to take this in here and you can add by squeezing it it says push right here you can squeeze it and water will come out and as you can see it makes it even even wetter all right so we'll start with that which is a really light coat and i'm going to go quickly i'm not going to spend much time on the parts that are already already have the ink on them because i don't want to muddy that so and they, you don't have to be exact i'm going to go back for the bases of the petals but let's just get the tips of the the petals colored in with the petal pink. I think that's fun because we're painting petals with the petal pink. Gotta love all the all the names to the colors. So and then I do like to to color with almost any medium. So uh, I hope you do as well. If not, this is probably not for you, but you never know. Give it a try. This, like I said, is probably one of the more mm, tedious of the water coloring techniques, but I don't want that to stop you from at least giving it a try. You never know sometimes until you try. All right. So again, I'm trying to, and then I'm just sort of pulling down, get to the top tip, pull it down. There's no... There's no real right or wrong, but pretty much going the way, the direction of the flower. I think we've got all the petals. And then you can, you know, certainly can turn, turn it around as well. I think I missed a little bit on this, this edge, got most of those edges. And you can see a little bit of the bleeding right there where the soft suede is bleeding in. All right, we're going to close up the petal pink and now I'm going to move to the Blushing Bride. And again, I'm going to squeeze that stamp pad and there's your ink reservoir. And now I'm going to go basically where those lines were. The little are your shadows, your darker spaces, and we're going to paint with those using the blushing bride. And this time I'm definitely going to go pretty much just one direction. I'm going to go from the base outward down the petal. Like that. So I think for me coloring is very therapeutic. It's just relaxing. Some people even find it relaxing to watch other people color as well. So this could, if you're one of those people, I guess it could, I could put you to sleep. So then, so we'll do each of those petals. We'll go back to some of the, some of the tips have the darker color in as well. Of course you can make it whatever colors that you have or that strike your fancy. All right, I'm going to turn it just easier for me and again get to the base and then pull it outward and base and pull it outward looks like I've got probably one more right there oh no there's another one and then I'll go back a little bit on This, there's some other spots 
probably could add more water on those, make them not quite as dark as the ones towards the center. Because theoretically, I guess the, the light or the sun would be hitting those. Then I'm also going to go around other spots where there it's not really, but those lines are not there. They're pretty much on all of them, but I would think that it would be everywhere a petal is on top of another petal there would need to be. I think that's pretty much like it. Probably I would go on the edges there a little bit more, perhaps there. All right, and now I'm going to go back one more time with the petal pink which is the lighter color. I'm also going to grab my got a little piece of paper towel and I'm going to squeeze my brush and you can see when it gets clearer then your brush is ready for a new color and since I'm going back to a lighter color I wanted to and I'm going to actually go into the into the stamp pad itself okay I'm just going to kind of blend a little bit so that we've got the the darker going in so it's not quite as harsh of a not a harsh contrast it's a little bit softer so but anyway and you can you can change it up however but hopefully you can see that and then just you know I can push the the pin and get a little bit more water we don't want to get too much for several reasons and here again because I did not because I used a water-based ink as the stamp we don't want to don't want to muddy it all right it's looking pretty good okay anything that I didn't blend I think I got most of it all right let's move on to the leaves so I will close this up and actually you know what I'm I want to make I go before I clean my brush, I'm going to go back to the Blushing Bride. And I want to make this one right here darker. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. But again, I'm being a little bit picky, and watercolor is really not a picky medium. All right, I'm going to get my towel, rinse off my brush, and we're going to move to soft sea foam for... Let me squeeze it, give it a good good squeeze and we'll do soft sea foam. Soft sea foam is definitely a very light color and because of that um, more transparent I find that the soft suede ink tends to want to bleed a lot more into this so I'm just gonna see if I can get around the edges of this because I'm going to go back in with a darker color in just a minute. So let's make sure we've got all the outer edges done in soft sea foam. And you see I sometimes feel like I need a little more color and I'm going back into the stamp pad itself. Of course, I know that you can, if you're bored of the coloring, you can always sort of fast forward through that. I feel like that's probably a little bud, a leaf bud maybe, so I'm going to put just a touch of color on that. All right, now we're going to move to Pear Pizzazz. I'm going to give this one a good squeeze. Ah, oh, some of them just do better than others. All right, that's quite a bit of color, and it's quite a bit darker, so I'm going to add just a little bit more water from the brush just by squeezing the brush. And then we will add some to the center. And I'm pretty much going uh, around where the veins of the flower would be. Um, uh, leaves, sorry. Like that. On both sides of the main one. And then we'll go back and probably add just a tiny bit more dark and see if I can just get a 
just a little bit of dark darker in there probably not because it's still got quite a bit of water in there so but we can wait till it dries and add more well, we've got a little bit just a wee bit all right now I'm gonna go actually I think I like that I don't think I'm gonna do anything else to it I could go back with some of the soft sea foam and blend it or another option would be you can kind of just add a little bit more water and blend it but like I said on this one you're gonna have to be careful because you don't want it to be muddied by the soft sea foam all right now I think that's we're gonna get to I'm gonna rinse the mine off again just by squeezing and onto the paper towel I'm gonna do just a little bitty bit of the balmy blue and that so for some reason this one doesn't want to squeeze and I'm gonna just touch the balmy blue to these little bitty flowers just to give it just a little bit of a little bit of color all right and then I'm gonna use uh, watercolor pencils to finish this the coloring on here so we're done with our water painter all right let me close up our balmy blue rinse out this a little bit more all right I'm gonna move since we're finished with that I'm gonna move our scratch piece of paper away I'm gonna take the daffodil delight and color the center and then I'm going to take the early espresso and go across the the stem here it's pretty small pretty tiny and then we're going to take the balmy blue now there are two sets of watercolor pencils these belong in the first original set and this is a a second smaller set the balmy blue comes from and they have numbers that continue from the previous set the original set and like this is number 21 all right for the balmy blue I am going to very very lightly go around the whole entire thing and I'm going to kind of pull out just a little bit so I'm kind of drawing like that and then we're going to use a blending pen so it's not really a ink pen. I'll show you if you're not familiar with it. And we're just gonna go all the way around the whole thing, all the petals, all the leaves, and even our small flowers. And you don't have to be super precise, which is nice. I'm gonna get a little bit of color inside here. Go around. Because again, a watercolor is, you know, in a way, a forgiving medium, and it's not a, not very precise. Even if you did the exact same thing multiple times, you would never come out with the exact same look. So it would be unique each time. So I think we've pretty much covered all of those. Right, now we'll take our blending pen and this is the blending pen it has two tips they're basically um there's moisture in them i'm not I'm not really sure and um just a little bit of moisture so i'm just going to go back here and we're going to blend and you'll see that it just softens it and i'm pulling from the inside from the pulling it out and you can kind of just go back so if i'll hold it up maybe let's see if i can get it to where you can if it'll focus and you can see maybe depends on what device you're looking at probably so we'll just soften that and as it comes out I found that if you use the watercolor pencils and blend that it it's very difficult to go back and redo uh, after it's been blended so pretty much use them and get them exactly how you would like it and before you get to the to the blender pen it just doesn't doesn't work and you can get them you can make it light and dark it's 
it's also very fun. So we're, I guess in, in a way we're really using two different techniques in one. So it's a two for one. What about that? So, and again, it just softens it, makes it look, so it doesn't just stand there. It kind of gives it a little bit more dimension. All right, let me put the cap back on my blender pen. And I think the only other thing we need to do on this is I added just a tiny bit of Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella. And it's just the clear. And we're just going to, I just stabbed it up on the top of that. So that if you turned the cards a certain ways, it would be, it'd be a little bit shiny. So there is that. I think we're ready to put our card together. Oh, there's one more thing we need to do on the inside. And that would be to stamp that other flower on the inside, the smaller flower. So let me put that out of the way. And here's our smaller flower and we're gonna use crumb cake. You could use the soft uh, suede and then just stamp off, but I'm gonna use the, the crumb cake cause it's already soft and I'll make it, make it even. So there I just put that into the, the left hand corner and we can probably go ahead and do the inside so we're going to put those two together and i'm just going to use liquid glue it doesn't take a lot it's a very nice strong glue and the other really nice thing about it is it doesn't dry instantly so you have room time to move it into place all right, so there is the inside of the card. Let me get my bone folder and crease the card base. All right, I think I'll just go ahead. We were talking about that right there. I'm going to cover that up with the inside of the card. If you put too much of the liquid glue, it will kind of buckle and not... It will, it will adhere, but you'll kind of have lumps and lumps and bumps, and we don't want any lumps and bumps. So there's that. Okay, now we can do the front. Let's put our all of our pieces together. We can put the the base with our beautiful DSP. Again, sometimes it's very hard to even choose a choose a side. Okay. And it has just a little bit of the soft suede showing through. Oh, that's so pretty. All right, and then, oh, I did it again. Ha <laughs> ha, quick, 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 quick. Oh, look at that, just enough, just enough. Okay, we needed to put the ribbon. So, and on the ribbon, I went ahead and put some of the tear and tape. Let's see if this would, if this would do the trick or not. I haven't tried it this way. See if I can make it adhere to the ribbon or if it's going to stay on the, may, may decide to stay. Yep, I don't think it's going to adhere to the ribbon. So what I'll do instead is I'm going to put a little bit here. Slide it up a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit here. See if the other one will come off as well. It was a good idea. You can always experiment. You might find out, find different ways to do things. All right, we can pull the backing off, see if it'll, ah, yes, it worked. Okay, now we're gonna put it here. around Let's see if I can get it straight you don't have to use the tear and tape I just thought that would be good let me add a little bit more liquid glue since we sort of pulled that up Let's see if I can slide that over a little bit more all right just in time just in time. Now we can put the rest of these together. We're going to put liquid glue here. Let's 
Let's have the soft suede on top of the, the crumb cake. And then we'll put our watercolor paper, our finished flower on top of that. And then instead of using the liquid glue, I chose to use the dimensionals to pop it up. And they're strong as well. You don't have to use a lot of them. I think I'll just, I think that will be sufficient. And I'll pull the backings off. And then our card will be finished. And hopefully you learned a new technique or something that I did that you've not experienced before and that you'll give it a try. So there it is. What do you guys think? I really like it. All right. So there it is. Oh, wait, wait. You're right. You're right. Thanks for reminding me. Isn't that fun when you think people are are able to talk to you. I remember being young and there was a particular preschool show and my sister was, my little sister was convinced that they could hear and so she would get up really close to the television and <laughs> say her name when it was time to call out names so that the, the, the teacher she thought could hear her and could would <laughs> say her name one day she, they actually did and it was it was I guess it probably made it clear to her that indeed you could hear you could talk to the television and they, the people could hear you which is just hilarious so yes see I heard you guys say that I forgot my embellishments all right let's get this last one I'm using my take your pick tool my hands have some glue on it so it's not working as well you can use different ends of it of the take your pick tool it's an awesome tool all right so three is just a great number to use right there and these i don't believe i mentioned it are the rustic metallic adhesive backed dots so yes thanks for saving me on that one and there it is there's our card i keep getting it completely out of the the camera so i hope you enjoyed today's uh video and i hope that you've already subscribed to my YouTube channel. I have over a thousand subscribers. I think on the recording of this video, it's somewhere around a hundred and I mean, 1037 maybe. So anyway, um, uh, it just delights my heart to be able to make these videos and it, uh, especially when you're able to comment on them. And um, I, I just love that, especially when they're good comments. And, um, and typically they are because you guys are an awesome audience. So subscribe, push that button if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time in the treehouse. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.